and welcome to another episode of Sports and Songs Podcast. We're in season three, episode number 40. Today is August 26th. Andy, how you doing? I'm doing good. Yourself? Good. I got a little bit of a hoarse voice here. We can get through it, I think, just fine. Tonight's episode is the songs edition. Tonight's songs. No sports, songs only. We're going to cover a little tour, album of the week, concerts, what? albums, album all release. sorts of musical jackpots yes um uh, so I'll what start do you off with an album review how does that sound i'm sorry i'll start off with an album review yes let's hit that first uh i'm throwing my glasses here album is called too high to die by the meat puppets there we go there it is now i would say Maybe little known, kind of, kind of before the the grunge and alternate stuff came out. But "Too High to Die" is the eighth studio album by American rock band Meat Puppets, released January 1994 on London Records. It was produced by Paul Leary. Paul Leary's from the Butthole Surfers. Yes, uh, I, I recognize the name from that. Yeah, fame. Um, and the title is actually a parody of "Too Tough to Die," the 1984 album by the Ramones. Oh, okay. That's the parody for this here. Uh, the limited edition Too High to Die included the 10-inch vinyl promo EP Raw Meat. The cover art on this limited edition features more color than the simply pink-toned normal color. The album was supported by a lengthy tour, which included spots opening with the likes of Blind Melon, Soul Asylum, Stone Temple Pilots, and shortly before the album's released was uh nirvana this was uh recorded in memphis tennessee 1993 it's called alternative rock or grunge 52 minutes long and you probably heard of this song andy the but the backwater the song backwater is the most popular song on this. Okay. Very, very good it sold very well due to the success of its single called backwater which reached number two and number 11 on the billboard mainstream rock tracks and modern rock tracks charts. The album itself reached number one on the Heat Seekers chart, making it one of the most Meat Puppets' most successful and highest ranking albums. Album was certified gold. Now, there's also a rarely seen video for We Don't Exist, the song We Don't Exist, but that was nominated for Best Metal Hard Rock Video at the 1995 MTV Music Video Awards, but lost to White Zombies More Human Than Human. That I didn't know until I just did the research here for this. That was a huge music video. Uh, yes. White Zombie. Now, in July 2014, Guitar World placed this album, Too High to Die, at number 44 in their super unknown 50 iconic albums that define 1994. Uh, I'll read that again. The top 50 albums of 1994. Wow. <laughs> there were so many that year that this album – only got as high as 44 on the list. Unreal. And we know grunge and everything was coming out at this time. So th that I thought was pretty indicative. My God, you know. Yeah. Um, also, a top also... 10, um, on the Alternative Nation website, listed Too High to Die at number nine on their top 10 alternate rock albums of 1994. Now, that one made the top 10. Here's the track listing. Song one, Violet Eyes. Song two, Never To Be Found. Song three, We Don't Exist. Song four, Severed Goddess Hand. Song five, Flaming Heart. Song six, Shine. Song seven is Station. Song eight, Roof With A Hole. Nine is Backwater. Uh, do a do a video search on YouTube for the video for that. That's a good one. Got a lot of airplay on that uh, radio backwater. Song ten is things. Song eleven is why. Song twelve is evil love. Song thirteen is coming down. But it also features a hidden track of Lake of Fire. Now you might remember Lake of Fire, a common Nirvana song that they played yep. at the MTV uh, Unplugged. Yep. That is actually. A Meat Puppets original song. Oh, okay. Meat Puppets, it's just a three-man group. It's uh, brothers Kirk and Chris Kirkwood. Kirk Kirkwood and Chris Kirkwood. 
Chris plays bass, Kurt plays guitar, both sing, and the drummer was Derek Bostrom. Now, the interesting thing is here, uh, Andy, is is this. I didn't know this also until uh, doing a little research. This band is older than we think. Uh, they, they formed in January 1980 in Phoenix, Arizona. The Kirkwood brothers met Bostrom while attending Brophy Prep High School in Phoenix. The three men moved then to Tempe, Tempe, Arizona, a Phoenix suburb, and home to Arizona State University, where the two Kirkwood brothers purchased two adjacent homes, one which had a shed in the back where they regularly practiced. Uh, this band started off as a punk rock band, and I'm sure they played a lot of a lot of uh, you know parties in, in the university area. Right. Arizona State must have been huge. Um, they created their own unique style, blending punk and country along with psychedelic rock. But Meat Puppets later gained significant exposure when the Kirkwood brothers served as guest musicians on Nirvana's MTV Unplugged performance in '93. Their subsequent '94 album, Too High to Die became their most successful release. Meat Puppets has influenced a number of rock bands, including Nirvana, Soundgarden, Dinosaur Jr. So what they did, Andy, they had a, they had a bunch of fun. They almost had too much fun back then. And uh, members of the band all became addicted to cocaine, heroin. These guys liked to party. And um, they're all still living. They're all still living. But... Um, it was uh, it was a rough ride for these guys who liked to have their fun. They loved to party, yep. and they uh, they lost control a little bit. But uh, things were wild there in the early '90s. That's what I've got today for album of the album review of the week: The Meat Puppets. Uh, yeah, the I don't know any of their stuff. I, I just remembered one of my favorite songs is "Backwater" of all time, and also that uh, that uh, that cover song. Yeah, the night. Lake 93, of 93 to 96, I was sadly going through my country phase. Whoops. Yep, I admit it. I mean, I still knew Rob Zombie. I was still in the mainstream rock and roll stuff, like some of Meat Puppets and early Nirvana was kind of obscure to me. I was going through my country phase, but I admit it. I've seen help and counseling since then. Yes, yes. I've moved on. I've admitted it. Um, like I said, I'd really never heard the name I'd heard the name Meat Puppets like on TV shows they talked about it and I always thought it was a joke band they just made it up yeah but then when I saw this you sent it to me and I looked up some of their songs like okay I, I recognize the songs I just never knew who it was so that was very interesting stuff um I don't really have anything more on them I just have some concert information here and some album releases and stuff uh first of all we'll start with the new album Skid Row has a new one coming out October 14th called the gangs all here. Um, they did an interview with uh, some magazines and stuff. I got that on our social media site on our Facebook page. You could see their interview there and how, uh, how things went. I think Dan, you would appreciate the interview if you give it a read. Gets a little political, but not really. So it's kind of cool. Okay. I thought um, skid roll. Yes, not, no Sebastian, not Bach, no Sebastian right? Bach, though, so just don't get too excited. No Sebastian Bach. He hasn't been with them for quite some time. Yep. So just excitement there. Uh, concert change. We talked a couple weeks ago about Striper coming into town, <clears throat> playing. Um, that concert's been canceled. Uh, Striper had to cancel a bunch of concerts. And, uh, again, we put this post on our Facebook page from their website, from their Facebook page. I shared it. Um, basically, they, they're not hiding anything. They said it was a pure financial thing. They had to cancel a bunch of concerts. He goes, they basically said, so many bands are on tour right now, it's really hard to get tour buses. And the labor shortage for guys to work tour buses and gas prices, they just had to, had to make some cuts. Um, so their concert at the Caboose has been canceled. They're picking up on September 27th through the rest of the year for the rest of their shows. And, of course, their concert here was supposed to be the 18th. Um, you can go through whoever you purchased your tickets. They're giving full refunds. They're not saying anything about rescheduling. So they're giving full refunds back. And that's just the, the, the right thing to do. Instead of like, oh, no, we're going to keep your money and come back in a year and a half. No, they're just giving money back. So um, 
they are still on other tours. They still do a lot of stuff on social media, so they're a good follow there. But again, if you got concert tickets for the Caboose, uh, either save it as a memoir or if you want. If not, they would, are giving full refunds. Uh, in Mankato at the Mayo Clinic Health Systems Event Center, Judas Priest, 50 Years of Heavy Metal will be there, their tour. 50 Heavy Metal Years, Judas Priest, October 30th in Mankato. That's a nice size venue as well. It's a nice small, yep. like Civic Center size, great yep. for music venue. Yeah. So Priest will be there. Um, Joe Satriani, October 9th at the State Theater. And just announced the other day, Friday, October 28th, at El Rey's Live and Dive in Iowa City, a 21 plus solo show, headliners, non grata. Oh, really? So, those of you down in the Iowa City area, you college folk. Oh, sure. Non grata down there. Um, that's what I got. Not much on the tour stuff. I guess we kind of covered the state fair tours a while ago. A lot of outdoor stuff. Um, the bar scene bands are kind of winding down now as summer ends. Most of the kiddos will be back at school next week, week after. So all that stuff's going to end. And we're back to, like like we said, Judas Priest in the Mankato Health Center, Saturday the State Theater. You'll see more concerts like that coming up here on the program. Like I said, the Striper stuff we put online on our Facebook page and also the interview from Skid Row we put on there also. So that's a good read for that one. Yeah, it's basically your last uh, full weekend of summer. You know, next weekend, it's uh, a short week. We got Labor Day coming up, and it's going to be fall season. It's going to seem like fall coming up. Yep, yep. Um, I've already I got two emails this week already for my fantasy football stuff. So that's the first sign of fall right there. Oh yes. So it is. All right, that's all I've got for this week uh, episode. Of, this is uh, episode number forty. Anything else, Andy? Uh, no, just watch for the fall. We'll have more music stuff coming up. Not only our music special like this, but we'll have other different side uh shows we do in the awesome. summer a lot of extra sports episodes we do a lot more music ones coming up in the fall and winter gotcha all right have a good week everyone see ya